Let's start by giving our praises to the Most High, whose true name in Hebrew is Yahweh, and the name of his only begotten Son, whose true name in Hebrew is Yahweh Shai, and the Holy Spirit, which is the Rakah Kodash, double honors to the elders and apostles, and the Holy Spirit, who taught us his truth, honors to the brethren doing the work to push the gospel, risking their life and freedom to do so. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect which would be one third of all Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians, which make up the children of Israel who will receive salvation by seeking the most high right now. So we back with another lesson through the power and spirit of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah. This lesson is going to be titled, He that escape shall not be delivered. This is going to be part two, you know, and I might add outer space, or space hotels, something like that to it. Which, the first one, he that escaped shall not be delivered, it was pretty much talking about how all the rich, the elites, the mighty men, the top scientists, they going into their underground bunkers that they dug into the earth, or these cities that they carved out of these mountain ranges or even the bunkers that's on tops of the mountains. They go in there, you know, to be uh, shielded from, war, from World War III, the nuclear destruction, which is going to be people that actually escape the nuclear destruction by running to one of three places. But just because they avoid the nuclear destruction, it don't mean they escape judgment. It don't mean they escaped the hand of the Lord. So we're going to start right here. This is Wisdom of Sodom is 16 to 15. But it is not possible to escape thine hand. Because the book of Amos told us the day of the Lord is all darkness and no light. Meaning what? No light means there is no hope. If you're not of the elect who's going to receive that salvation, there is no hope. Also, too, it says like, if you met a lion, then you fled and met a bear. Run into a house, lean on the wall just to get bit by a serpent. That's the thing. You may avoid this, this, and that, but you're going to run into something else that you won't escape from. So again, it is not possible to escape the hand of the Lord. Also, too, I want to touch on this. Because... Um, Matter of fact, this this let us get to the precept real quick. Let's get Amos chapter nine. We're gonna get one through four. I saw the Lord standing upon the altar for what? For judgment. And he said, Smite the lintel of the door, that the post may shake, and cut them and cut them in the head, all of them. And I will slay the last of them with the sword. So the Lord gonna slay every last one of you who are not part of the elect. Lord wouldn't be a part of that. He that flee of them shall not flee away. Yeah, the people going to try to run, but they going to get nowhere real fast. And he that escapeth of them shall not be delivered. Okay, so let's get this word delivered. We touched on it yesterday, but let's get it again. Strong's H5927. That's not what I'm looking for. Forgive me. Strong's H, 4422, Malat, Malat. Strong's H, 4422, Malat, Malat. So yeah, deliver goes into slipping away, escaping, deliver, uh, to save. So people are not going to save themselves. Then when we go down here, um, it says save life. So he that escape shall not be delivered. So yeah, people who actually avoid the nuclear destruction, you're not slipping out the hand of the Lord. You're not escaping judgment. You're not saving yourself. You know, 
Yeah, so he that escape with them shall not be delivered. So you just gonna be met with another danger, another judgment. And let's go into the few ways that people are gonna temporarily avoid. We're not gonna say temporarily avoid. We're gonna go into the few ways that people gonna avoid the nuclear destruction. Though they dig into hell, then shall my hand take them. So we went into that yesterday. Digging into hell, digging means digging into the earth. What are they digging? Those underground bunkers. Though they climb up to heaven, thence will I bring them down. And this is what we're going to cover today. Though they climb up to heaven. But let's get the rest of verse 3. Though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel, this is a mountain, represent the various mountain ranges. A lot of these mountains you see, they got military bases in them secret bases in them at the bottom of the mountains at the top of the mountains and though they be hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea this will i command the serpent and he shall bite them that's gonna be part three but we're gonna go back up to the second half of verse two though they climb up to heaven thence i will bring them down so they're gonna climb up to heaven to avoid the nuclear destruction but guess what? The Lord is going to bring them down himself. So when we think about the nuclear destruction, I got a picture here. This is the various nuclear bombs that's, that's been developed during the late 1900s. Like you got Hiroshima and Nagasaki, these very small mushroom clouds. But you see, you got an airplane. So with the old nuclear bombs, an airplane could actually fly above that. Then you got the tallest mountain, Mount Everest. You know, Mount Everest um, wouldn't protect you even from the smallest nuclear weapons. And keep in mind that this diagram is about 30 to 40 years outdated. And then, as you see, over time, they develop more and more powerful nuclear bombs. You can see to the point that not even an airplane or a helicopter could get you high enough. And then, when you approach the height of the SAR bomber, that goes into the stratosphere. So, that's the upper atmosphere. So, yeah, when you read Amos 92... Though they climb up to heaven, then I will bring them down. So we're going to break this down all the way. Uh, this is really saying they're going to go in the outer space. They're going to go high above the earth, high above the nuclear destruction to avoid the nuclear fire. And some of our people on the low level, on the lower level, is trying to do the same thing. People talking about getting passports. You got to fly to another country. You got to get out of America. That's not going to cut it. Because, you know, when you read about the scriptures, it tells you that the sun going to be blocked out. Esau's science to tell you that it's going to be a nuclear winter. You know, all kind of dust and smoke going to block out the sun. Killing what? All the vegetation. No food. No fertile ground. All the brimstone and radiation. Radiated waters. Disease. That's going to be taking place, deformities, people being sick. You can't be on the earth. And wherever you people think you would escape to, best believe that's going to get bombed too. Because it's not like people going going to fly to a remote island that man has never discovered. No, y'all people, the, the best y'all going to do is go fly somewhere else that's modeled after America. Y'all going to fly somewhere that has internet. You're going to fly somewhere that's what you would call uh, modernized. Anywhere that got internet, anywhere that's modernized, anywhere where there is life similar to America, they all getting bombed too. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, on a lower level, our people want to get out of America, but on a higher level, Esau the white man trying to go into outer space. 
So now we're going to get um, into some more info. So, though they climb up to heaven, then I will bring them now. So let's let's break this down. So it says, though they climb up to heaven, climb up to or up they climb. We're going to get that in the Blue Letter Bible. We're going to look at this word in Hebrew to see what it's actually saying. Strong's H 5927. Allah. Allah. Strong's H 5927. Allah. Allah. See that? Though they climb up to heaven. You could just simply say, though they go up to heaven. Or, though they ascend to heaven. This is not the literal act of climbing. Like you climbing a ladder or climbing stairs. This simply means to go up. You know, however you go up. Back in the book of Genesis, they was building a tower of Babel. Well, in this lifetime, they don't need a tower. They got rockets and all kind of BS like that. Let's see if anything else pops up. So, yeah, they're going to go up. They're going to ascend. They're going to climb to outer space. Look, it says to come up, to come up before God. So they're going to actually ascend in the outer space where the Lord is also going to be with his elect. Because we going up as well by the way of the chariots, what the world calls UFOs. And we're going to show why that makes sense. Because what's the only way to get something out of this, to get out of this in an instant, is to be beamed up on a UFO. The chariots of the most high. Because the scriptures say we're going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye. So as fast as you can blink, we are already going to be up off the earth and in a new body. But let me uh, shoot. check this last one out. It says to go up, go up over of boundary. So the Lord set boundaries in the earth. Man not meant to be underneath the oceans, all in the oceans, looking down there. Man not meant to be outside of earth's atmosphere. That's why Esau tells you that there's a, a, a lack of oxygen. Esau tell you that um, there's, a, there's a risk of, of uh, radiation poisoning up there. The Lord says certain boundaries, and what Esau going to do? He's going to go up, ascend over the boundaries that the Lord set. But remember, wisdom of Solomon 16 to 15, it is not possible to escape thy hand. So it's impossible to run from the Lord. So now that we got that, we're going to show that Esau, the white man, has been climbing up to heaven, ascending into heaven, going beyond the boundaries of the Lord for a very long time. It is not just, all right, they've been doing this for a long time. So check this out. We're going to hit Isaiah 14 and 13. Now tell me who this sound like. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. See that? That's the same word as climb. Though they climb up to heaven, a climb literally means to ascend, to go up. But in Isaiah 14, it reads, I will ascend into heaven. Who's the first people to so-called go to the moon? Esau, Edom, the white man, the Edomites over here in America. Then who was right behind them trying to do it? Russia. I would exalt my throne above the stars of God. See, that's that pride. The Lord set boundaries and they want to expand um, their kingdom, their rulership beyond the boundaries that the Lord set. And they want to colonize, Americanize outer space and other planets. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north, that's North America, and this is verse 14. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Who's the only people 
that's trying to go to the moon, all these jets, skyscrapers, um, skydivers, that's Esau the Edo. Why? I will be like the most high. That's the pride. They think they God. They think they can outdo the most high. But really, they want to ascend above the heights of the clouds. They want to ascend into heaven to escape the nuclear destruction. Because it's going to be a, a, a global disaster. But this disaster is going to be man-made. But although it's man-made, you know, it's still Bible prophecy. The Lord will have them destroy themselves. All right, so now we're going to link this up with the book of Obadiah. We're going to get verse 1, the vision of Obadiah, thus says the Lord Yahweh concerning Edom. This is the so-called white man. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Who is this her? The Edomites over here in the west. Lady Liberty, America, this queendom. And what, the whole earth? is rising up against her in battle. This is World War Three, But when we go down to verse 4, we can just see verse 3. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. Yeah, because what did they say? Out of pride, I would exalt my throne above the stars, stars of God. I will be like the Most High. So yeah, the pride of thy heart has deceived thee. Though thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, because they're the cave man, and they return it back to the caves and them underground bunkers, whose habitation is high, so they high minded. They think they above everything that the Lord has created. They think they above the law, statutes, and commandments. They think they above the boundaries, the order that the Lord has placed in the earth. That saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? This is literal. Well, this is well, this applies a couple ways. They think nobody can bring them out of rulership. They don't think nobody can take them out of power. But this is going to be literal. When they climb up to heaven, when they ascend up into outer space to flee from the nuclear destruction, they're going to think they made it. They're going to think they safe. Then they're going to be saying, okay, who's going to bring us down from here? What can happen to us now? But read verse 4. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. Ain't the eagle on the back of the, the quarter, the dollar, the U.S. flag all over the place. And though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence I will bring thee down, saith the Lord. So yeah, see that? Though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence I will bring thee down, saith the Lord. That's lining up. With Amos 9 and 2. Though they climb or ascend, go up to heaven, outer space, thence will I bring them down. So you're going to have a nation of people and everybody that's joined to them trying to go to outer space to flee from the judgments of the Lord. They're going to avoid the nuclear destruction, but the Lord got something else planned for them. And we're going to get what the Lord got planned for them once they get up there. But I got a handful of videos we're going to look at real quick to show that Esau is climbing up to heaven and has been. That's why you got NASA. That's why you got these fake moon landings, all these telescopes out there. What you think they're looking for? They're looking for a way out. They, they, they're not concerned with educating people. They found out they can make a few dollars off of it, playing on your imagination. But they out there trying to flee from the wrath of the Lord that's to come. But um, let me get these videos. So check this out. They got space hotels. And the first space hotel is set to open in 2025. And this video is only nine months old. And 2025 is just a few months away. So it also the nuclear destruction got to be not far probably around the same time that these space hotels are going to open and best believe they already open when america tell you something they already passed that point but check this out Coffee coast your next vacation could be somewhere up in the stars that's right plans are in the works to build <laughs> next vacation 
could be somewhere up in the stars. See, the day tongue condemning themselves. I would exalt my throne above the stars of God. Let's go to Obadiah now. Though thou set thy nest among the stars, this will I bring thee down. All right, so let's let's finish. Hotels in outer space, and as Fox 5's Jennifer Williams shows us, they could be up and running by 2025. We have a variety of platforms that we're developing to allow the everyday person to live, work, thrive, and play in space. As in outer space, and the out-of-this-world experience could be here before you know it. There's nothing technological that's stopping us from meeting that timeline. Uh, we can have the hotel operational in 2025 uh, funding and, and market dependent. A space hotel? I'm a little risk adverse, so I think I'd let a few others go first. Above Space Development Corporation is behind the project, and both hotels would have the option for artificial or zero gravity. You'll be able to do the flips and all the fun stuff that you see in the movies and with astronauts, but at the end of the day, you can sit down, have some really good food, have a nice drink, and look out the window and see Earth uh, spinning below you. I like this gravity right here. <laughs> The Voyager Station Hotel See, that's is expected to accommodate. A sister was like, I'm good. I just stay on Earth. That's Esau. That got, got, got that gotta go outside of the boundaries that the Lord set. They gotta ascend above the stars to be like the most high. Hundred and forty guests. While the Pioneer Station Hotel would be a more intimate experience with the capacity for thirty space travelers to stay at once. As for the cost, the determining factor for staying in a space of cost don't matter. So, yeah, they got space hotels. Now, let's check this out real quick because you see Esau always talking about he discovered another Earth. They're looking for other planets that's capable of sustaining life. They found other uh, inhabitable planets meaning planets that support life. What you think they're looking for these other planets for? They trying to flee from the judgment of the Lord. Because that 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 nuclear destruction <laughs> is going to tear this place apart. So all they trying to do is run from the most high. Team of scientists stated that they have found not one, but two planets 100 light years away that could be sustainable for life. These planets are 30 and 40 percent larger than Earth, and they believe that it's possible that these planets could have liquid water on the surface. The two planets, LP 8909b and Speculus 2c, orbit their star every 2.7 days and 8.5 days, respectively. Speculus 2c is only about 3.7 million miles away from its sun, which is much closer than the Earth's 93 million miles from our sun. The LP8909 star is about 6.5 times smaller than our sun. Esau full of crap, but he trying to flee uh, from judgment. Okay, so also I want to look at too, um, when you consider the Space Force. And this is a real website, the United States Space Force. Let's read some of it. The United States Space Force was established December 20th, 2019. When the National Defense Authorization Act was signed into law, creating the first new branch of the armed services since 1947. The establishment of the United States Space Force resulted from widespread uh, recognition that space is a national security imperative. National security, like <laughs> they anticipating the return of Yahweh Shai in the armies of heaven. When combined with the growing threat posed by strategic competitors in space, this is a global effort. They don't they don't have no competitors. What they talking about Russia and China? They all in on this together. No, the the, the real threat is Yahweh Shai and the host of heaven. But this is the sixth branch of the military, and we just showed you you know that it's a real thing. Let's see what else we can see. And this is the home page. This is the sixth branch of the military. So the space hotels, um, them trying to militarize outer space. What did Obadiah win and force say? Do thou exalt thyself as the eagle. An eagle flies higher than any other animal. 
so as he saw the so-called white man. He's going higher than any other nation of people. And though thou set thy nest among the stars, that's what I bring thee down. So let's also check this out. This is SpaceX. This your guy Elon Musk. The dude that made the Teslas that's catching on fire. The dude that also made the Neuralink brain chips to read your mind and control your decision making. Well, this guy is also taking people into space and has been for a long time. They, and, and let's check this one out. We're going to click this dragon. They actually got a space shuttle called the Dragon. So when you read Revelation, the 19th chapter, it says the dragon and his angels went to war with the Lord and his angels. The dragon and his angels is talking about Esau, the damn white man. And check this out. 46 total launches, 42 visits to the International Space Station. That's a whole nother conversation. And best believe all these numbers are underreported. So yeah, they 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 literally climb, ascend into heaven, outer space. They've been doing so for a long time, all uh, for this moment that we approaching. The day of destruction, the day of the Lord. But also, too, we want to look at something real interesting. I got the definition for this word nest. So let's link this with Obadiah 1 and 4. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. So this goes in the, into them trying to uh, inhabit outer space. They want to take life beyond Earth's atmosphere. Now, let's look at the definitions for this word nest. So it reads a place or specially modified structure serving as an abode of animals. So a place of a place as an abode, that's uh, your habitation where you rest, where you live, where you lay your head at. So it's not just limited to birds. Okay, so check the second definition out. Here we go. It reads, a place of rest, a retreat, a home. So thou, though thou set thy nest, though thou set thy place of rest, your homes among the stars. That's what I bring thee now, set the Lord. So them outer space hotels is nothing but an underground bunker that's in the air. So you got the underground bunkers and you got the above Earth's atmosphere bunkers. That's all that is. It's a bunker. Rather, it's in the ground or above the Earth's atmosphere. So let's get the sixth definition for this word nest. See nest right here at the top. Let's go to definition six. An in-place group of weapons. What's that in place group of weapons? That's the Space Force. And then when you look at Elon Musk, SpaceX, space launches, they taking all them trips to the International Space Station, launching all these rockets and space shuttles. They taking weapons up there. They taking food up there. They taking military equipment. So an in place group of weapons. So do thou set thy nest your home, your place of rest, your living quarters among the stars, also your weapons, your military, your missiles among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. So that's a direct threat and challenge to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. You going up there with, with weapons and, and, and laser technology and satellite weapons, outer space weapons. That's like if you come knocking on my door with a gun in your hand. That's that's a a straight threat. How you think I'm gonna answer the door? That's the same case with Yahweh Shah. You taking all that stuff up there, how you think he gonna respond? That's why he says this will I bring thee down. 
All right, so I went on a little longer than expected. We're going to get to the point now. So back to Amos 9 and 2. Um, let me get that. Do they climb up to heaven? That's them ascending into outer space. Space hotels, international space stations. Um the space force militarizing outer space. So though they climb up to heaven, then I will bring them down. So everybody that escape the nuclear destruction and go into outer space, what's going to be their fate? That's, that's the point of the lesson, but we're going to get their fate. So this is second Ezra chapter 13. We're going to get verses one through 11. And it came to pass after seven days, I dreamed the dream by night, and lo, there arose a wind from the sea, that it moved all the waves thereof. All right, so here comes the point. And behold, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. Who was this? The son of God, Yahweh Shah, and the host or the armies of heaven. That's why it says with the thousands of heaven, he ain't coming alone. And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. So if he's coming from heaven, that means he's coming from above. So what? What would be under him? All life on earth. And then Revelation 1 and 7 tells us what? That every eye shall see him. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail and mourn because of him. And whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burned that heard his voice. Like as the earth filleth when it filleth the fire. So what does it mean all day burn that heard his voice? Well, also with the nuclear missiles going off, these these chariots with the world called UFOs, the host of heaven, they're going to be zapping people like in the movies, like War of the Worlds. When you heard it make that noise and then it started zapping people, well, that's the case. The Lord is going to give the commandment, the order, to zap folks. So that's the voice. And then once the voice of the Lord gives the commandment, then folks going to start getting torched. And after this, I beheld and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men. What's that? That's the armies of the earth, the armies of the nations. Out of number from the four winds of the heaven, from all over the earth. China, America, Europe, every country, every country, and their military, their army, their navy, foot soldiers, whatever they can contribute, they gonna all stand up to fight against Yahweh Shai and the host of heaven. Okay, from the four winds of the heaven, all over the earth, to subdue, meaning to overthrow the man that came out of the sea. This is not the sea. Meaning the water, this is talking about the heavens. Because the sea is it's a what it's a boundary set for man in a way. But what's outer space? Another boundary set for men. So a boundary below as well as above. But I beheld and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain and flew upon it. So yeah, that's why it says back up that all things trembled that were seen under him. He's going to be flying on top of a mountain, which is a huge UFO, a huge chariot, like the movie Independence Day. But I will have seen the region or place where about the hill was graven, and I could not. He couldn't see where it came from, and he couldn't measure it. It was indescribable. And after this, I beheld and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue, to overthrow him, were so afraid. So the nations, the men that make war with Yahweh Shai and the angels, they're going to be afraid, yet durst fight. So the Lord going to harden their hearts, put it in their spirit to fight. And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand, nor held a sword, nor any inst instrument of war. But... Only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire, 
and out of his lips a flame and breath. And out of his tongue, he cast out sparks and tempests. So we're going to break this down. So it says, out of his mouth, as it had been a blast of fire. So it's not going to be literal fire coming out the mouth of the angels. No, it means when the Lord opened his mouth to give the commandment, to give the order, to start blasting folks and everything else, all people, things, and objects going to start getting blasted. And out of his lips, a flame and breath. So when the Lord moves his lips to give the order, the laser beams going to come out. But also, too, a mouth just means an opening. There's going to be a mouth on a UFO opening where the laser beams come out at. So, yeah, the mouth of the chariot going to open and that blast of fire, concentrated fire, them laser beams going to come out. And they were all mixed together, the blast of fire, the flame and breath, and the great tempest, and fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight. So all the countries, the nations, and the armies that fight against Yahweh Shah, they're going to get blasted on the earth, above the earth, in the air, in the water. They're going to get blasted wherever they're at, wherever the Lord gives the commandment to get blasted. Okay, um, and fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight and burned them up every one. So that upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude, nothing was to be perceived. So again, all of a sudden, an innumerable multitude, innumerable meaning you can't number it, you can't count it. That's all the armies of the earth of all these different countries coming against Yahweh Shai. They're going to come out against Yahweh Shai in a number that you can't count. But it says um, nothing was to be perceived. There's going to be nothing left. They're going to be totally disintegrated. But only dust and the smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. So they're going to come against Yahweh Shai with all kind of equipment, robots, drones, satellites, Things we never seen before. Super soldiers, nukes, missiles, things we never seen before. But when it's all said and done, it's gonna be nothing left. The Lord gonna uh zap them to powder. So back to Amos 92, though they climb up to heaven to escape the nuclear destruction, though they Meet the Lord at his appearance to try to fight him, to subdue, to overthrow him. Thence I will bring them down. Now let's sit over Daya. Verse 4 again. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, your home, your place of rest, your weapons, your military among the stars, thence I will bring them down, saith the Lord. And that takes us back to what? Wisdom of Solomon 16 and 15, but it is not possible to escape dying hand. So a lot of folks are about to get torched. Rather, they in these jet fighters fighting against the Lord. They're here on the earth fighting against the Lord. Or, or just the Lord don't like them. And, and, the, and the people in their space hotels, in the International Space Station, y'all getting torched too. So that's their judgment. They're going to go all the way up there just to get shot down. <laughs> so that went probably twice as long as expected. But the water you have about you have shallow. What it was edifying. Until next time. Shalom.